OK, so we're going to find the coefficient of x to the power of 105 in this product. So we don't want to expand all of these brackets. That would be far too much effort to do by hand. So we're going to take a more combinatorial approach to solving the problem. Just to get us started, we'll have a look at expanding the first few terms just so that we can understand what's going on in this product. So if we take the first three terms, let's expand out the first pair of brackets to begin with. We get 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed, then multiplying this out by 1 plus x cubed. When we multiply by the 1, we just get a copy of everything we already had there, plus x cubed. Then when we multiply everything by x cubed, we get another x cubed, plus x to the 4, plus x to the 5, and finally plus x to the power of 6. So you'll see here that our coefficients of all the powers of x are 1, with the exception of x cubed has got a coefficient of 2. And if we think back to the original brackets we were expanding, we can understand this as there are two different ways of multiplying terms together to get a power of 3. We could do 1 times 1 times x cubed, or we could do x times x squared times 1. So there are two ways of getting a power of 3, and this is the same as saying that the coefficient of x cubed is 2. Whereas, for example, for x to the power of 2, there's only one way of getting a power of 2. You have to do 1 times x squared times 1. That's the only way that will work. And this principle applies as well for this all the way up to the product where n is 15. So actually, the number of ways that we can make a power of 105 is going to give us the coefficient of x to the power of 105. And this is because the coefficient of all of these terms, 1 and powers of x, the coefficient of each term is just 1. So if we want to find the final coefficient of x to the 105, when we expand all of this, we just need to count the number of ways there are to multiply terms together to get a power of 105. So this still seems like quite a daunting task. We certainly don't want to try and find all the different ways of getting integers to sum to 105 using the integers from 1 to 15. So for example, one nice way of doing this to get 105 would be 6 plus 7 and so on, all the way up to 15. So count all the integers from 6 to 15, you can check that we would get 105 here. But we'll be able to simplify the problem a little bit by focusing not on the integers, the powers of x that we've included here, but actually focusing on the ones we haven't included. So we've included x to the 6, x to the 7, all the way up to x to the 15, but we haven't included x to the power of 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5. And the sum of all of these powers, of the remaining powers we haven't included, is 15. So now we can use the fact that if you're going to make some choice of all of the different powers of x that gives you a sum of 105, let's just look at what our total product looks like, 1 plus x plus 1 plus x squared and so on times 1 plus x to the 15. So you make some choice out of all of these so that the sum of those powers is 105. Well let's think about the ones that we haven't chosen. So the sum of all of the remaining powers is going to be the same each time. So here we've got our total sum of all the different powers of x, 1 plus 2 plus all the way up to 15. So using the formula for the sum of integers from 1 to n, a half n times n plus 1, you can do a half times 15 times 16, so we get 120. So 120 is the total sum of all of our different powers of x there. So if we've chosen different terms, so that the sum of those terms is 105, and we've chosen the other terms to be 1s. If we look at the powers of x we haven't chosen, the sum of those is always going to be 15. So for example, if we swap the 6 out for a 2 and a 4, then you've still got a sum of 105, and then the ones that we haven't chosen, so 1, 3, 5, and 6, the sum of all of those powers is still going to be 15. So this is really useful because we're trying to find the coefficient of x to the 105. And finding the coefficient of x to the 105 is the same as finding the number of ways there are of choosing powers of x so that we get a power of 105. But we've just seen that for each of these choices, there's exactly one corresponding choice where we get a power of 15. So instead of counting all the different ways of making 105, let's count all the different ways there are of making 15 from all of these powers of x. This will be much more manageable for us. So that will give us the coefficient of x to the 105, which also happens to be equal to 
the coefficient of x to the power of 15. So there's some really nice symmetry about this product. So we want to find the number of different ways of multiplying terms together in this product so that we get x to the power of 15. So even this might seem quite daunting, but actually most of our products are going to contain mostly 1. So for example, we could do x squared times x to the 13, but then all of our remaining terms would just be 1. So you'd have 13 lots of 1 in this example. So here we've got two terms involving x, and like how we've got two terms involving x for this particular example, we're going to split up according to the number of terms involving x in each of our product. So this is a particularly nice way of doing things, because there's only so many terms involving x that we would actually be allowed to include, because let's imagine we used six terms that involve x, so the smallest we could possibly take is x to the power of 1 times x squared times x cubed and so on, but 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 actually gives us 21, which is far too big, because we're just looking at making x to the power of 15. So actually, we only need to go up to five terms involving x if we split up in this way. And even for five terms involving x, you might be able to convince yourself that there's only one way of doing that. So starting with one term involving x, there's actually only one way of doing this, because you'd have to take x to the power of 15. If you took x to any other power, you would need to involve other x terms. So there's only one way of doing this. This is just by taking x to the power of 15. So we'll say there's one way of doing this for one term involving x. If we were to take two terms involving x, then we get more possibilities. So for example, we could have x to the power of 1 times x to the power of 14 would give us x to the power of 15, and multiply that by remaining 1s. You could have 2 and 13, all the way down to 7 and 8, at which point we run out of further possibilities. So this gives us another seven ways of doing this using two terms that involve x. So now we'll count the number of ways of multiplying exactly three terms involving x so that we get a power of 15, or more informally, just three x terms. So we'll start by focusing on those which use x to the power of 1. So if we include x to the power of 1, then we just need to, similar to what we did before, we're now counting all of the pairs of integers which sum to 14. So our first pair would be 2 and 12, then we could have 3 and 11, and we keep going all the way to 6 and 8 to give us a sum of 14, so our total sum is 15. Now we can't actually use 7 here, because if we had 1, 7, we would need to include another 7, but x to the power of 7 only appears once in our product here, so we can only use 1, 7. So here we actually stop, so this is a total of 5 different ways of making x to the 15 using 3x terms, where we include x to the power of 1. So then looking at x to the power of 2, we effectively want to find pairs of integers which sum to 13. So the first such pair would be 1 and 12, but here we've actually already counted 1, 2 and 12, and we don't care about what order they appear in here, because all we're doing here is multiplying x to the 1 by x squared by x to the power of 12, and there's only one of each of these appearing in the product. So we don't want to include 1 and 12. So the first pair that we would actually use, which gives us a sum of 13, would be 2, 3, and 10. Then we could go to 2, 4, and 9, 2, 5, and 8, and finally 2, 6, and 7. So that gives us another 4 there. If we look at the ones which are including x to the power of 3 then, we would have x to the power of 3, and then our remaining 2 need to sum to give us 12, and we can only use integers which are greater than 3, because we've already counted other ones which use 1 and 2. So we'd look at 3, so the first pair that gives us a sum of 12 is 4 and 8, then we'd have 3, 5 and 7, but again we can't use 6 here because we'd need another 6 to make this sum 15. So there's only actually two ways of doing this including 3. Then if we look at including 4, if we use 4, 5 and 6 we get exactly 15, and this is the smallest possible pair of integers we could use here. So if we used anything bigger, than 5 and 6, we wouldn't be able to make a sum of 15. So we get an extra one way of doing this just using 4. Then if we looked at doing this using 5 and above, you can see that 5 plus 6 plus 7, the sum would then just be too big, it would be bigger than 15. So this is all the ways of doing this so that we get 
a power of 15 using exactly three x terms. If we do 5 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1, you'll see that we get an extra 12 terms multiplied together so that we get a power of 15. And now to find the number of ways of making 15 using exactly 4x terms, we can actually notice that you need to use one of x to the power of 1 or x to the power of 2. And you can show this quite easily because if we don't include 1 and 2, the smallest possible powers we could use are 3, 4, 5 and 6, but their sum is 18, which is too big. So in order to get a sum as small as 15, we have to use at least one of one or two. So let's start by fixing one, and we'll actually go as far as to fix the second number as well. So we'll start by finding all of the ones where we use x to the power of one and x to the power of two. So just like before, we're now looking for pairs of integers which sum to give us 12, not using one and two. So we'll start with three and nine, then we can go to four and eight, then five and seven. And just like before, we can't actually use 6 because we would need two 6s to make a sum of 15. So we get three different ways of making 15 where we use 1 and 2. So now let's, we'll keep the 1 fixed, but we'll look at the ways of doing this where we use 1 and 3, fixing the 3 as our second number. So we don't want to include 1, 3, 2 and 9 because we've already done 1, 2, 3 and 9. So this is already included. We're only really interested in integers greater than 3, where we get a sum of 11 now. So we can do 1, 3, 4 and 7 gives us 11, and we can also do 1, 3, 5 and 6. So the 5 and 6 give us an 11, and you can see we've run out of further options there where we fix the 1 and the 3. So we've got another two combinations there. So keeping the 1, let's have a look at 1 and 4. Well, the smallest possible sum we can get where we don't use 2 and 3 now, will be 1, 4, 5 and 6. So you can see this gives us a sum of 16. So actually, there's no more ways of doing this where we use 1. We've exhausted all of those. So now we're looking at all of the cases where we use 2 and we don't use 1. So if we fix our first number as 2, let's have a look at fixing 3 as well. So we're now looking at pairs of integers greater than 3, which give us a sum of 10. So we can do 2, 3 and 4 and 6 will work, but actually if you look at using 5 you would need to have two fives. so there's no other ways of doing this. So actually using 2 and 3, this is the only combination that's going to work. So we get one extra way of doing this with 2 and 3, and if you go up to 2 and 4, the smallest you can make this is 2, 4, 5, 6 gives you a sum of 17, which isn't going to work. So we've actually exhausted all the possibilities now because we have to use 1 and 2, we've covered all the cases where we use 1, and we've also now covered all the cases where we use 2, and we've covered the cases where we use both as well, while we were finding all of the cases where we use 1. So this gives us a total contribution then of another 6 ways of making 15, using exactly 4 x terms here. And finally, there's only actually one way of multiplying 5 x terms together, so that we get a power of 15, just because if we choose the smallest possible combination, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, we get x to the power of 15. So if you were to choose any other combination, you'd have to swap one of these powers out for something bigger, which would make our sum greater than 15, and it wouldn't work. So there's only one way of doing this, where we use 5x terms. So now don't forget, in terms of the original problem, where we have 5 of these x terms whose product gives us a power of 15, if you look at the other 10 x terms and multiply those together, you'll get x to the power of 105, because the total was 120 for all of the powers. And similarly, where we have these six ways of getting x to the 15 using four x terms, if you were to use the corresponding 11 x terms that we haven't used each of these six different ways, you would get x to the power of 105, and similarly 12, 7, and one different ways of doing this using different numbers of x terms. So adding these together, we get 1 plus 7 plus 12 plus 6 plus 1 gives us a total of 27 different ways of getting x to the power of 15. And this solves our original problem then, so we can conclude that the coefficient of x to the power of 105 is going to be 27 in this product.